Have you been looking for portrait editing tutorials here on YouTube only to be met by videos where the creator is using a preset or talking about complex things like frequency separation? Yeah, it's pretty annoying to me as well. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna share the eight steps that I use to edit portraits using just the basic tools within Lightroom and Photoshop. Stick around to the end to see a really cool trick that will make your portraits pop. Without wasting any more time, let's get into step number one, which is to start like a pro. There are a few things that you could do in the beginning to make sure that you ensure the success of your retouching. And the first thing that you need to make sure that you do is to start with a good image. Take it from me, there is nothing worse than spending 20 or 30 minutes retouching a photo only to realize that the photo wasn't good to begin with. Before I start retouching a photo, I wanna make sure that the starting image looks pretty good, that it's sharp, that it's in focus. Before I even start applying any of the techniques that I'm gonna show you in this video, you have to start with a good portrait. The pro secret here is that there is no technique that is going to make a bad photo look better, okay? You wanna start off with the best possible portraits so that the next techniques that I show you will make that photo even better. The next step in starting like a pro is to make sure that your workspace is set up properly. Now I know a lot of you probably just use your computer mouse or your trackpad on your computer to edit your photos. I could tell you that that is going to make the process a lot harder. Oftentimes if I'm retouching a photo and I don't have the right tools in front of me, my hands are gonna get tired, my creativity is gonna run dry. So you wanna make sure that you have the right tools before you get started. Some of the tools that I use in my workspace to be able to edit and retouch photos is of course a tablet. And using this helps you to make really precise, really pinpoint adjustments to your photographs. It does take a little bit of time to learn, but trust me when I tell you, if you're gonna be retouching photos, if this is gonna be your career, this is something that you need to have to help you to get to the next level. The next accessory that I use is actually a product by a company called Tourbox. This is the Tourbox Elite, and it is an amazing tool. Essentially, with my left hand, I keep my hand on the tour box the entire time that I'm editing these photos. And these buttons and dials and everything that's on this device are set to adjust specific dials and sliders within Lightroom, within Capture One if you're using Capture One, and also within Photoshop. This makes it to where I could actually just have my left hand on the tour box, have my right hand with my pen on the tablet, and I could actually retouch a photo from start to finish without having to touch my computer. Maybe you might have to touch it once or twice just to name a photo or name a layer, for example, but it really minimizes the amount of times that you have to touch your laptop or your keyboard. The Tourbox Elite has software where you could actually customize all of the buttons and features of this device. It's nice and weighty as well, so it's not gonna move around while you're actually just speed running through your edits. But what's really awesome with the software is that it has this feature called Wonderflow. Wonderflow makes it really easy for you to be able to pick out specific sliders and settings that you use the most within Lightroom and quickly adjust those without actually having to use the interface within Lightroom. I'm gonna show you how exactly that works here as I'm retouching this photo, but I can tell you that it saves so much time versus having to adjust those sliders manually within Lightroom. The next step in starting like a pro is to make sure that you pre-visualize what you wanna to do to a photograph before you even get started. You should be able to look at a photo and identify what is it specifically, two or maybe three things that straight away you know that you want to adjust with a photograph. The two things that I wanna change here with this photograph is the background, make some adjustments to the color, to the saturation, and of course to my subject, Caitlin, I wanna make sure that she's popping off of that background based on the adjustments that I'm making. Now that we've set up the foundation for this edit, the next thing that we're gonna do is to correct our raw file in Lightroom. So here's the photo that we're gonna be correcting and working with here in Lightroom and Photoshop. And you can see the settings and everything of how I shot this image. If you wanna see the behind the scenes of how it was lit, you could actually watch my video talking about my favorite studio fan. I'll link that in the description of this video and you can see exactly how I lit this specific shot. Now there's a couple of things that I wanna make sure that I pay specific attention to. You do wanna make sure that you have your highlight and your shadow warnings turned on. This is gonna tell you if any parts of your image are either over or underexposed. In order to do that, you go into your little histogram panel here. You'll have these squares on the left and right side of that panel. And just make sure those are selected. And you can see on this photograph, there's some parts here that are lit up in blue. And what that's saying is that these areas here are underexposed, which means the pixels are pure black. Now, 
on the inverse side of things, if I took the exposure and I raised it up, any parts of the image that are overexposed are gonna appear red. So we wanna make sure that we don't have any red or blue highlighted areas on our photograph, and at least make sure that they're not in areas that are super important like the skin, the clothing, things of that nature. In this specific photograph, I'm not really too worried about the fact that that area really close to the side of her face is underexposed. We could do a few things to be able to boost that up, but you do wanna make sure that warning is on there because if you saw the red or blue on the face or on the hair or on the skin, you don't want that. The first thing that I do with my raw files is to adjust the white balance. And so I'm gonna use the tour box here to be able to do that. Using that Wonderflow feature, I'm gonna push up to select general. And you're gonna notice that you have this panel which could be customized and I have all of the tools within Lightroom that I use to adjust my photos. They're all here on this one panel, so I don't have to go digging for them in Lightroom. They just all pop up and they're there. So the first thing that I do is to adjust the temperature using the dial on the tour box here. I'm gonna bring my temperature to right around 5310 for the temperature, and that gives us like an orange, kind of a warm glow to the skin. We're gonna to continue to work on the color, but I wanna have the white balance to be as close to what I want the skin tones to look like as possible. So right around 5310 looks good. The next thing that I'm gonna do is to adjust the tint, and I'm gonna bring the tint up to right around 18. And again, I'm really looking more so at the skin tone than the overall image. The background, I'm gonna do some targeted adjustments within Photoshop, but for me, the skin tone with the temperature and the tint settings that I have here look pretty good. Of course, your mileage may vary depending on your specific image. You want the white balance to be as close to like perfect as possible in camera. And so we started off with a really good image, so there wasn't too much we needed to do there. The next thing that we're gonna do here is to go down to the shadows, and we're gonna see if we can bring back some of that shadow detail. Right around plus 36 looks pretty good. We've got a little bit of shadow detail being brought back in those underexposed areas while still keeping the overall image looking pretty good. Next up, we'll head over to the blacks. We'll just give a little boost to the blacks. These next three settings, texture, clarity, and dehaze, I use those a lot in my studio portraits, but I don't use that whenever I've shot an image wide open like I did with this one. This was shot at f1.2. So you typically don't wanna add texture and clarity to an image that already doesn't have a lot of texture and clarity because of the way it was shot. So we'll skip past those three. We'll head over to Vibrance, and the Vibrance, we're gonna bring that up to a plus five, and the Saturation, we'll bring that to a three. Keep in mind that this is something you're gonna have to do if you are shooting your images in camera as RAW files. The RAW files inherently have very little contrast, they have little vibrance, little saturation. So these are the steps that you have to take in the you know, raw retouching process. You have to do this to your files to get the best possible outcome. Let's take a quick look at the before and after here. I'll remove this panel. And as you can see, really the majority of what we've done here is to kind of color correct the skin and just make sure that that looks really good. At this point, we could go ahead and take this photo into Photoshop. We could do that by right clicking on the photograph, going to edit in, and then I'm gonna select edit in Photoshop 2024. Depending on what version of Photoshop you have installed, it might be 2023 or 2022, it is gonna take that photograph and it's gonna open it in Photoshop so that we can continue. This brings us to step three in the process, which is to separate our subject from the background. We're gonna do this within Photoshop, and the newest version of Photoshop makes it very easy to do this. To get started, I'm gonna move this Wonderflow feature, kind of move this shortcut here to the top right. And within the latest version of Photoshop, it's really easy for you to select your subject and your background. If you press select subject, you'll see here that Photoshop has done a really good job of selecting Caitlin. And what we wanna do at this point is, we're gonna do Command J. That will create a layer with just Caitlin on it with the background taken off. And we could go ahead and we can name that. We'll name that subject. We'll turn our background back on. And then for a second time, you wanna make sure you have the background selected, the background layer. Hit select subject again. 
But this time we want to select the inverse because we already have a layer with our subject. We want one now with just the background. So there is an option here, which is basically to invert your selection. We're going to select that. And once again, on a Mac, we're going to hit Command J. And then we'll name that layer background. So now we have three layers. We have our background layer that has both the subject and the background. We have one layer that is just the background. And then we have one layer that is just our subject. Now that we've completed this, we're going to move on to our next step, which is to create some background contrast. So in order to do that, we're going to turn off our subject layer and then our uh, background layer that's going to have like everything on it. And we're just going to work with the actual background layer itself. There are three adjustment layers that I'm going to add to this background layer where I could actually manipulate this and make it look the way that I want. So we're going to go over to the adjustments panel and we're going to add these three adjustments. The first one is going to be this color balance adjustment layer. We'll go back to adjustments. Then we're going to add a hue saturation layer. And then we'll go back to adjustments and finally we'll create a curves adjustment layer. Now these three adjustment layers, you could actually create an action and it will create those layers for you with just one touch. But the really important thing that you want to make sure that you do with these adjustment layers is to tie them to that background layer. So in order to do that, you're going to hold the option key on your Mac and you'll notice that if you hover in between that first adjustment layer and the background layer, you get a little box with an arrow down. You're going to select that and you're going to do it again with hue saturation and do it again with the curves layer. And you'll notice you have these arrows that are all pointing down. And all that's saying within Photoshop is that the adjustments that you're making, they're only targeting the layer that they're clipped to. So I've clipped those adjustments just to the background layer so that later on when I make additional adjustments, it's not going to affect those things. It's only going to affect the background layer. So now that I've explained that to you, let's go ahead and start adjusting that color balance layer to get things started. And within this color balance layer, you can actually adjust the midtones, the highlights and the shadows of your image. And in this case, because it's clipped to just the background, we're just going to be adjusting the those parameters on the background. So we'll start off here with the cyan and red. So for these midtones, I'm going to drop this to right around negative 45 because what I want to do is kind of create kind of a teal and orange type of effect where the background has a little bit more of a teal vibe and then her skin is going to have more of an orange vibe. So we'll start off with the cyan red at negative 45. We'll bring the magenta up to right around plus 16. And then on the yellow blue slider, we'll bring this up to right around plus 26. Now this already looks pretty good, but I want to make some adjustments to the highlights as well. So we'll go to tone. We'll select highlights. And then for this slider, we'll bring this up to plus 46. We'll go into our greens here, bring this up to right around plus 42 looks good. And then finally the blues, we'll bring this up to plus 18. Yeah, plus 18 look pretty good. Okay, so let's do a little quick check here. We'll do before and after. So you can see that we've kind of changed this to a little bit more of a kind of tealish uh, blue color, but we're not done just yet. We're going to go up to our hue saturation layer and we want to make sure that we're working on the master layer here to kind of get things started. The first thing that we're going to do is to adjust our hue. We're going to push this hue value up a tiny bit, maybe to around plus 10 looks pretty decent. And then we're going to drop our saturation quite a bit. So. Let's see, we'll bring it to right around 46 looks pretty good. We'll leave our lightness just as is and we'll do a before and after here. And so you can see that it's basically still has some of that bluish color, but it's just a little bit subdued. Now the next part of this process is that we're going to go into our curves layer and we're going to make two adjustments. What I want to do is I want to bring the midtones down just a little tiny bit. So you'll notice I can add quite a bit of contrast just by bringing this tone layer or sorry, this curve layer down a tiny bit. So we'll bring it down to like right here. And for me, that actually looks pretty good. So we'll do a before and after here. You can see that we've kind of toned things down a little bit with the background. And if I turn on all three of these layers, there we go. So you could see what we've done. Now, what I like to do at this point is to take those adjustments if I hold down shift, it's going to select those three adjustment layers. 
And if I hit Command G, we could group those so that I could turn them off and on. And you could see what exactly has happened with those adjustments that we made to the background. And it might be a good idea to just name that so we could do background adjustments. So that way, if we open this up later on, we know where all of those background adjustments have been made. Now, there is one thing here that I just noticed that I do want to address. If I zoom into this photograph here and I look at her shoulders, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of a halo that's happening. If I turn off the adjustment layer, you can see that those adjustments specifically are creating this kind of halo uh, effect around her shoulders. And it's on both sides. It doesn't look good. We wanna make sure we don't have that. So what we could do to adjust that is, down here at the bottom, you could add a layer mask. And that layer mask is basically going to make it to where we can kind of remove this effect from that shoulder area. Now, white on a layer mask means that everything is still showing within uh, that image. So all the adjustments that we made, uh, white reveals, black conceals is the saying. So if we take our black brush and if we go over it, we want to make sure that our flow is at 100%, opacity is at 100%. And what I like to do is kind of go over those edges with that brush and basically just remove that halo using that layer mask. Just kind of do it rather than talk about it here. And again, using the tour box, I can adjust the size of that brush, which is pretty cool. Come over on this side, we'll remove that effect here. Because again, we really just want to target the background. I don't want to have any kind of adjustments that are being targeted towards Caitlin at this point. We're going to do that in the next step. Now, after we've zoomed out here, you'll notice that everything looks pretty good. That effect now is really just targeting the background. And now we could actually move on to the next step. Here in step number five, we're going to create some subject separation. To do this, it's pretty easy. We're actually gonna go back to our adjustments and make sure that you have your subject layer selected to begin with. And we're gonna select the curves layer. Just like we did the first time where we attach that layer to the layer that we're working on, I'm gonna hold down option and hold my cursor in between those layers and I'm gonna press that. So now we've clipped that curves layer to the subject layer. You'll notice here that I could actually raise that curve or lower that curve, and it's just affecting Caitlin. It's not doing anything to the background, and that's because we've clipped it to our subject layer. So what I actually wanna do here is I just wanna add a little bit of a boost to the midtones, not too much. So if I do before and after, you'll see it's not a, a massive difference, but again, this is all cumulative. Over time, it's gonna build up, and it's gonna lead us to that final image. So we're just boosting it up just a tiny bit. And then we're gonna go into, and we're on the RGB curve, by the way. So that's really affecting the luminance uh, or the brightness of the image. And then we could actually hit this and we could go to our reds layer. And of course, skin tones live in this red channel. And so what I wanna do is I wanna take those reds and I'm gonna bring that up just a tiny bit in the midtones. So if you remember, I was telling you within Lightroom, there's some things that you wanna do within Lightroom to boost those things up. Here, I'm actually just doing it within Photoshop. I've made simple adjustments to white balance in Lightroom, and then I'm tweaking it even more in Photoshop. So you can see if I do before and after here, we've brought up the skin tones a tiny bit. We've also injected a little bit more red into the mids, which is where the skin lives within that curve. And at this point, I think we've got an image that looks pretty good, but there's still more we can do. So at this point, this brings us to the next step, which is skin retouching basics. Now, if you remember, I told you, I'm not gonna use any kind of fancy tools like frequency separation or anything like that. You could really do quite a bit using just a couple of tools built within Photoshop, and you could do all of it on a blank layer. So let me show you how to do that. First things first, we're gonna add a blank layer. That is the little square with the plus icon at the bottom here. And I like to rename these layers, just like I've been doing this entire time. We'll go to Skin Cleanup. And that is, again, just so that we know what this layer is about. We might revisit this photo months from now, years from now. And it's just good to know what it is that you've done on each individual layer. So on this Skin Cleanup layer, there's a couple of things that I wanna make sure that I do. Um, the first tool that I'm gonna be using to retouch the skin is called the Clone Stamp Tool. And this tool is super powerful. And essentially what it does is it allows you to sample 
a specific part of the image and then basically paint over a different part and it kind of copies that color and that texture and it puts it somewhere else. Where it gets really powerful is if you go into your clone stamp tool settings, you'll see here that you could adjust the hardness. And I think this is where most people have a hard time with this tool. They don't adjust it. So maybe by default, the hardness might be set to zero. And when it does that, when you sample an area, it's very blurry, right? So let me just show you what that looks like. We're gonna use the tour box here to kind of zoom in a little bit. And where people mess up with this tool is that, let's take an area like this on the skin. There's a lot of texture, there's a lot of detail, but because we have our clone stamp tool set to 0% hardness, what'll happen is if I select an area, which we do by holding down our option key, but again, because I'm using the tour box, I have a button that's set to that. So we're gonna select this little piece, right? This patch of skin, and when I brush that in the area, you're gonna notice that that doesn't look good, right? That looks terrible. And part of the reason is that we have an area of skin here where there's a lot of texture and detail, but the copy that I'm getting with this clone stamp tool, it's not sharp and it doesn't have a lot of detail. I'm essentially painting blurry skin on top of sharp skin, which is not what we wanna do. So instead, we're gonna to go to our hardness and I'm gonna bring this hardness up to maybe around 62%. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Using the tour box, I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller. We're gonna select a patch of skin by hitting that option key. And we're just gonna paint over these areas. And what's really great here is that what we're painting is basically her skin texture and we're just painting it over those areas where our eyes might be drawn to those areas of the image. Now again, as we move through and work on different areas of, the, um, of this image, you're gonna have to adjust the hardness of your clone stamp tool so that it matches the areas that you're trying to work on. Zoom in a little tiny bit here, get a little bit more precise. Now it may not seem like we're doing very much right now, but what I'm trying to do is to really just kind of target these little blemishes. There might be some areas with makeup where, you know, the makeup wasn't blended the very best that it could be. And so we just want to target and address those specific areas using this tool. If you notice as you're working with this tool that it's uh, looking kind of weird when you copy and paste whatever it is that you're copying and pasting, the easiest thing you could do is to kind of go back to your brush and just play with the hardness. There is a setting within that clone stamp tool that will basically get you the correct texture uh, that you want to be able to paint on the image. So for example, in this area here, if I was to use that really hard brush, you're gonna notice that it actually looks pretty decent right there. But as you get kind of farther down on the face here where it's actually starting to fall out of focus, if you copy and paste those areas, you're gonna see where you did that. So these areas, you wanna go back to your hardness and you wanna drop that down a tiny bit. Maybe we'll bring it to 20%. We'll start to just again, select different parts and just brush it in. Now there's another step here in this process that will also help us to make this image like perfect. But in this case, I'm just using this tool and I'm just briefly and quickly kind of going around and picking out some of the areas that I think basically could look a little bit better with this tool. Now you could even use this tool to edit and retouch the eyes. If there's any kind of red veins or anything like that in the eyes, you could easily just go in there and just kind of brush that area away and get it looking pretty good. I'm gonna bring up the hardness a little bit. We'll sample this. So you can see that just using this clone stamp tool and just basically adjusting the hardness all throughout, it's gonna give you an image that looks pretty good. We'll kind of zoom out here, do it really quick before and after. And you probably can't see too big of a difference at this point, and that's okay. We've actually have made quite a big difference here. 
If I hold down option and I click on the eyeball, you can actually see all those different areas uh, on the image where I've actually made those adjustments. So you can see all the brush strokes and everything that we made up to this point uh, on this specific image. If I hold down option and click again, it brings everything back. And again, your skin retouching process shouldn't be where everything is just gone. You get rid of all the texture and all the detail. You really just wanna target the areas of the image that need to be addressed. Now there is another tool that we can use here because there are gonna be some times where the clone stamp tool may not be the right tool to use or maybe it's just not giving us the effect that we want. So the other tool that I use is called the patch tool. If you go over here, you could see that patch tool is selected. And the big thing you wanna make sure of, and actually I didn't say this on the other one, but make sure that with the clone stamp tool that you have it set to current and below. I think by default, maybe it might be set to current layer. And if it is, because you're working on a blank layer, it's not gonna work. So sorry about that. If you've been retouching and you didn't have that set, make sure that is set to current and below or else nothing that I just did is gonna work properly. We'll go over to our patch tool and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna select sample all layers. And this tool works a little bit differently. So what you could do is you could actually just circle, for example, different areas of the skin. And then we could go over to an area of skin that is nearby and basically replace the texture and the detail that's there with a different area. Very similar to the clone stamp tool, except with this, I feel like you could just target things a little bit differently. And for certain areas, it works a little bit better than the clone stamp tool. So using these two different tools, it's gonna help you to be able to make the image perfect, get it exactly the way you want it to be. All right, so I feel like we've done quite a bit here. Let's kind of bring this back out and we'll do a little quick before and after here. So we'll click on that eyeball and we'll just see before and after on skin cleanup. Do before and after again. So as you can see, we haven't done a whole lot on this skin cleanup layer and that's okay because it's gonna take us to our next step. Step number seven in this process is dodge and burn. To give you the Reader's Digest version of what dodge and burn means, you're essentially brightening certain areas of the image and darkening other areas of the image. And you do it really easy using a brush. So let's talk about how to set it up. First things first, again, make sure you have that skin cleanup layer selected. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down option and we're gonna click on this new layer icon. Now, if you don't hold down option, it's just gonna create a blank layer and that's not what we want. We want this dialog box that says new layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this. So we'll just call this dodge and burn. And then where the magic happens is we're gonna change our blend modes here from normal to soft light. And when we do that, you're gonna see this option here, fill with soft light, neutral color, 50% gray. Make sure you select that box. So this is what your dodge and burn layer should look like, soft light, Fill it with neutral color, 50% gray. Make sure opacity is at 100. Don't mess with anything else. Just hit OK. So at this point, it's created this dodge and burn layer. And if I turn it off and on, you don't see anything, right? You have to do some work here to make this work. The next thing we're going to do is create a little bit of a help layer, because oftentimes it's really hard for you to figure out where you apply this technique and where you apply this um, adjustment to the image. So what I like to do to help me visualize where I need to work with this tool is to add a black and white adjustment layer. So if you're in that adjustments panel, select black and white. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna turn your image black and white. And now instead of looking at color, you're just looking at the contrast and you're trying to see what parts of the image basically have contrast that doesn't really match because essentially that's what your eyes pick up as a flaw or like an imperfection. If you see contrast in an area, where you shouldn't see contrast, that's where you're gonna run into problems and that's how we're gonna fix it using this dodge and burn tool. Now this black and white layer, what I like to do is I like to take the reds because if you remember, the reds is where the skin tones kind of live and I'll just bring that down just a tiny bit just so that I can better visualize those contrasty areas of the skin. Using the tour box here, I'm just gonna punch in a little bit. You're gonna see that now we're not looking at color, we're just looking at the contrast you can see these areas of the face where there's little blotches of highlights and little blotches of shadows. And again, it could be makeup, could be lighting, could be a variety of different things, but we're gonna fix that now using Dodge and Burn. 
So in order to set this up correctly, we're gonna choose our brush. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna click on this little black and white box here on the left, that's gonna reset the tool. And essentially when you're brushing with black, what that does is it will darken whatever part of the area that you're brushing. And actually it will just do that here. So you can see that created a very dark line across the face. We'll get rid of that. And if I hit X on my keyboard, and again, you could customize your toolbox to be able to switch between the brushes, which I probably should have done before I started. But uh, if you hit X on your keyboard, that is basically gonna go from black to white. And now with white, you'll notice that if I paint with white, it's gonna brighten those pixels on the face. We'll hit Control Z to get rid of that, and we'll reorient our photo here. All right, so going back to our brush, super important, the settings. You wanna make sure that your flow is set to maybe around 2% when you're starting off. You could actually have this as high as 5%. I've seen crazy people doing like 10% flow. You need to be really good at using this tool. If you're gonna use anything above a 2%, you gotta be really good, you gotta know what you're doing. At 2%, you can't really get yourself into too much trouble because it's gonna apply the effect very gradually and very slowly, and that will help to keep you from getting in trouble. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is to dodge, which is gonna be to lighten certain parts of the image. And basically, all I'm doing is, I'm going over these areas where I see these kind of dark patches, and I'm just gonna brush over those areas. The other thing that I wanna to try to do as well is I do wanna make sure that whatever area it is that I'm going over, that if there's an area like, say, the nose, the bridge of the nose that already has a highlight, you may want to actually just get rid of all these like patchy dark areas that are in those highlights. Because again, those are the things that your eyes pick up, right? I, I could see that there's some dark areas in those highlights. I could also see here that, you know, there's a dark area here in the shadows, but it's not continuous. So we could switch between tools and I could actually just kind of dodge and burn these different areas so that we could hopefully get it to match just a tiny bit better. I'll actually go over in the corner of the eyes because it's kind of a natural area where I usually have a little bit of a highlight. So I do tend to dodge those a tiny bit, make them a little bit brighter. There's a dark patch here, so we'll get rid of that. And again, this black and white layer, it's really, really awesome just to be able to visualize and see you know, what it is that you're doing. And sometimes what I like to do is, I will oftentimes do dodge and burn kind of at a, at a distance so I could actually see what it's doing. But then throughout the edit, I might punch in a little bit closer so I could see a little bit better where those areas are that I need to target and basically just address those. And again, it's all about being smooth, kind of being subtle with this edit. Here on the lips specifically, oftentimes when you're doing studio stuff, this will already have like a highlight there. And uh, also kind of here in the, uh, I guess it's the Cupid's bow of the lips. Uh, that's an area that you wanna add some highlights to. And as you can see, because I'm brushing this kind of slowly, a little bit at a time, the effect builds up. So the more that I actually, you know, do a brush stroke in that area, it's just gonna lighten it ever so slightly. And again, there's a natural highlight on the forehead, so I'm just gonna brighten that up just a little bit. And also just above the eye. And of course, just below the eye. All right, so let's back out of the image here and let's take a look. It's really a, a good idea as you're kind of working on the image just to do a little check and make sure you didn't go too far. So we're gonna turn off that black and white layer so we could see it again in color. We'll do before and after. You could see once again, it's not a, a massive difference, but all of these little incremental changes, they basically all add up in the end to give you something that looks pretty good. Look at it here, close up, here's before, here's after. So you could see, actually let's turn it off, before and after. So you could see that we've kind of evened out quite a bit of the tones here within the image. This dodge and burn process, to be honest with you, this takes like the longest time when you're retouching a portrait. You could spend easily an hour 
to get this image like perfect. But to be honest with you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to spend an hour doing dodge and burn because again, most people, they're not gonna see it. Like you can see when I do the on and off on this layer, you don't see that much difference. Like it's not a tremendous difference, but it is making a difference nonetheless. It's all additive, just little by little, just making these little tweaks to get it looking the best that it can look. Now there is a part of this image here uh, where I do want to darken this just a tiny bit because I do see some bright spots when I see the image kind of from far out. So I'm just going to darken just a little tiny bit some of these highlights, specular highlights as they're called. Darken this area here. And we'll do the same thing here. And again, we're just trying to even out the exposure here. We're not doing anything crazy. Again, we'll do before and after. We're starting to look pretty good. So we've kind of adjusted the contrast on the face. Um, one of the things that I love to do as well using Dodge and Burn is I will actually increase the highlights on the hair. So these areas where you see these natural highlights, I tend to just give just one or two little brush strokes here just to kind of brighten them up. Again, you don't want to go too far overboard with this, but there's before and after. So it's just a little tiny lift of the highlights in the hair just to kind of make them look cool. And then last thing that we're going to do is here on the arms, same thing using Dodge and Burn. We're just going to go over these little dark patches that are in these highlighted areas of the skin and just kind of tweak them, dial them down just a little tiny bit. All right, and then we'll do before and after. It's looking pretty good. Once again, before and after. All right, so the dodge and burn step is complete and this is gonna move us to our next step. This next step is what I call the contrast pop trick. And we have that black and white layer that we made earlier, and we could actually use this for something that's pretty cool. So what I will do is I'll actually just reset that red layer. If you double click on that little triangle, it'll bring it back to the original default state. So now we have that black and white image. And what we're gonna do is here in this box, we're gonna switch this from normal to soft light. So that's gonna change the blend mode of this black and white layer to soft light. And you're gonna notice that now, even though it's a black and white layer, we're actually looking at a color image, which is pretty cool. And what we're gonna do here is, that's a little bit too much contrast, right? Like it, if we do before and after, it just added just a crazy amount of contrast. But Photoshop is really powerful because you could take these layers, and you could actually just adjust the opacity of this layer and you can bring it down to where it's actually just adding just a little tiny bit of contrast. It's adding just a little pop to the image. So let's bring this up just a little bit just to see before and after. Yeah, so right around like 28% looks really, really good to me. So let's go back to the very beginning, go down to our first layer. If I hold down Option, here was the before where we started. This is how I came out of Lightroom. Here is the after. This is after we've done our background adjustments, skin retouching, dodge and burn, and added that contrast pop to the image. Punch in a little bit closer, do the same thing. We'll do before and after. So how cool is that? We're able to retouch an entire image using just the basic tools within Lightroom and Photoshop. And again, I could tell you, this Toolbox makes this process super, super easy. If you wanna learn more about the Toolbox, I'm gonna to have a link in the description of this video for you to check it out. Highly recommend it. I'm never going to go and retouch a photo again without having this tool on my desk. With that being said, if you have any questions about this retouch, let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna learn more retouching secrets, I've actually got several videos here on my channel. Put them here on screen for you to check out, and I'll see you next time.